Okay, can we have uh, some questions to Mr. Corrin, please? Yeah, I read a book uh, last year, it's about 500 pages, but you also know about the splits in the re between the official republic and the provisionals. It's about you know, the Workers' Party versus about their growth and decline. What, what, have you any insights into the different factions, like the officials versus the provisionals? Because now the officials are just the Workers' Party, a Marxist and Leninist Party, but they're not much support. Do you have any insights in the development of the two different groups? Well, no, uh, no uh, that happened in 1970, and I was here in London from 1967, so I got involved here with the Irish community. Apart from the political thing, I was also involved in the welfare thing, you know, providing welfare for the Irish community here and different other things. So I, I do know that basically what happened was uh, the Marxists tried to take over Sinn Féin, and the traditional Irish nationalists didn't want that, and there was a split. And Rory O'Brothy uh, led the uh, uh, nationalists, and then it, they came in to become the provisionals, and the other group then went into the officials. And uh, they, they were led by another man, and then the officials went into uh, government. So it was, I suppose, the, uh, when I came to London here first, uh, I went to several British left-wing groups and I got disillusioned with them because they kept on fighting and arguing about constitutions and standing orders and we Irish were no different. We had a, 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 a dispute, it was between the left and not exactly the right, but it was between uh, a Marxist and nationalist and that's what happened as I said. But I was here throughout all of that and I did not take part in any of that and uh, I was one of the very, very few people who kept on friendly terms with Jerry Adams and the late Rory O'Brien. I didn't get involved. I thought that the, the, the cause of Irish nationalism or the cause for an Irish Republic is above petty personal spits and arguments and rows and fights. And uh, I think it's a very difficult thing to do, but General de Gaulle was once asked at a meeting, was he left, right, left or right or center? And he said, no, he was above. And uh, I, I tried to do the same thing. I tried to keep about, but it was exceedingly difficult to do it. Uh, you mentioned um, the uh, court case in Brussels. Uh, am I right? Sorry. Um, Strasbourg. 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 Yes. Um, that seems to me to be a very important um, judgment event. And. Um, uh, would there be any way, possibly, that that could trigger what we've been trying for, or not, not myself particularly, but this campaign for ten years now, however, um, to get finally get this investigation underway? Could we not get this case against the deaths of the British people in the Twin Towers collapses um, um, brought up, up in, in, in uh, Strasbourg? Uh, I, I don't know if you'll be able to get the, the uh, you, you, you would certainly, I think that you would be certainly, if there was nationals of member states of the European Union, including the 60 people that, um, uh, who was he in his name? Uh, Matt. Matt. No, no, that Matt uh, uh, Ilis, uh, talked about, you see. So I think that the unite that nationals of member states of the European Union killed in the Twin Towers or uh, nationals of the United Kingdom. I think uh, in the European context you will have the case for that. And I think what should happen is that some of the lawyers, or some people should get the lawyers to get a copy of the draft of the thing, and then see, uh, can they initiate uh, uh, to demand an inquest for the 60 citizens of the United Kingdom who were killed in the 9-11. Um, and uh, I, I do believe that the European um, Court uh, would give uh, perhaps a ruling on it, which would be binding on the British government, because this ruling in relation to what has happened by the SAS in the occupied part of Ireland, uh, there is uh, 24 inquests, and I am pressing for these inquests to be held. So uh, I, I do think that the, that, that uh, now I did, why I mentioned this in the course of the question to uh, Matt was that this has got no publicity. It has there's not one single British newspaper, to my knowledge, no television station, uh, uh, no radio station has mentioned it. Daily Mail. Who? Daily Mail. What did they mention? Oh yeah, well, but if, but if uh, but if Abba Hamza uh, or Abba Qatada 
had gone to the European Court and be awarded 12,000 like the two people from the occupied part of Ireland, it would be on every single newspaper and every single politician to be pont pontificating about it uh, ad lib. There, there wouldn't be one of them that wouldn't be commenting on it. And I, I, I think that, it's, a, that it, it's very important, and it's a very important to get the campaign going, to extend it from the other thing. But, you see, usually it's news against the Irish first, and then it's news against everybody else. After the Prevention of Terrorism Act was first for the Irish, now it's for everybody. Uh, the the, the uh, CS gas was first for the Irish, now it's for everybody. Rubber bullets, uh, they, they're going to be used now on everybody. And um, that, that is it. So we, we have created the precedent in Europe, and I hope that all other campaigning groups uh, will uh, try and liaise with perhaps, the, maybe liaise with the two lawyers, the lawyers that have represented these uh, people and get the campaign going and I hope that it, it can be broadened from the 60, but I think it will have to be confined to the 60 United Kingdom citizens and uh, if there is other nationals of member states of the European Union, I don't think it, it would apply to uh, the citizens of the United States. Uh, and I hope that it, it, maybe it might bring in some real major advancement in relation to 9-11 uh, and a reinvestigation of it because the inquest could be used to bring up all sorts of points that have been brought up here by all the different experts and other experts that are not uh, here. Do you know the lawyer name? The names of the lawyers? Firm. Well, I can get, I, I can get them. My, 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 my um, civil rights colleagues in Ireland were involved in this, and um, some members of the Republican movement uh, didn't exactly give us much encouragement, but I pressed on with it and thought of go ahead with it. Could I just finish by suggesting three names um, uh, to try? And uh, one is um, Gareth Pierce, who is a lawyer with Bernbergs and Partners. Um, another is Philippe Sands, who is a apparently most informed lawyer of European matters. And the other one, of course, is Mike Mansfield. I mean, I'm just wondering if anyone could get access to these people. You have to do it through solicitors. But if anybody knows anybody who knows how to get to them, those are three names might be worth contacting. Oh, yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole flotilla of lawyers. Uh, there's no point in lawyers. But the thing is that uh, it, it will need an individual to initiate a case. Oh, of course. You see, an individual family to initiate a case. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then the whole thing could, or, or maybe maybe a group of families could come together. Uh, uh, the, the families of the, it would be ideal if the families of the 60 people would come together because, uh, because there's major uh, strength in unity. Because if we take the extradition campaign, we had the, the extradition campaign here in England expansion goats. I tried to get unity, but I couldn't get unity. I wanted Julian Assange, uh, uh, Shan, uh, Tama, and uh, the whole lot of them, and uh, McKinnon and O'Dwyer. But they wouldn't come together in the one meeting hall. I tried to get them, but it, it wouldn't work. I invited the whole damn lot of them to come, and none of them would come to get united. And I think that it was Barry McKinnon uh, who had the best campaign going, because he did it with parliamentary, uh, uh, through the uh, parliamentary lobbying. But the other ones wouldn't come together in one room. I, I thought that it, it would be highly effective, but I tried my best and I couldn't uh, achieve it. Uh, we, we, we must uh, start rolling up. But would you stay with us, Mr. Curran, just to roll together? Uh, I think we've got one, two, and Noel, were you wanting to? I did have questions, yeah. Okay, well, if we just sort of roll these I'll together. I'll be more brief with the next question. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Nice to see you again. Uh, Jim, my campaign for uh, Bradley Manning, Julian Assange, and also Tala Hassan, that's how you pronounce it. Um, I was saying to Noel earlier on, actually, that um, Tala Hassan's brother, Hamja, uh, was invited to this event, and I did pass on that information. Uh, but he was reluctant to come and speak to this event because of the stigma attached to the Reinvestigate 9 11 uh, group. Now, and, and it was sort of said earlier on by the, uh, the American lady about. Um, about the amount of people that support 9-11 and, and believe in it. I think that a lot of people on the left are, are very wary of being uh, connected to the reinvestigate 9-11 because there is a stigma to it and they want to distance themselves. I know a lot of people uh, in the so-called left anti-war movement who are very wary of sort of approaching it and think it's a waste of time and that you're a nerd and so on. And you said it yourself, the uh, conspiracy theory label has in itself become an insult or, or a form of ridicule. 
So I just wonder what you think about that, and also the fact that Panja, who you know very well and so do I, uh, is wary of coming to this meeting. No, well, I don't think you should be wary of coming to the meeting at all. And uh, yes, we, 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 we have conspiracy theories, but I, I don't think we should bother about them either, because uh, the Irish, uh, Irish freedom fighters were demonized and were called terrorists. And uh, those of us who, I was uh, looking after the welfare in a small group of people, but we didn't bother about that. And we didn't bother about what anybody said. And we couldn't give one damn about what they said. Because we believed that we're Irish freedom fighters and we campaigned because that's what we believed. And I think if you believe in something, I, it doesn't matter about what other groups think. I think you should campaign and campaign with as much vigor and as much determination as you should. Because if the ANC were to listen to all this out rubbish, they wouldn't have campaigned. The Basque wouldn't have campaigned. The Kurds wouldn't have campaigned. And the Palestinians wouldn't have campaigned. So we have to campaign, and never mind about whether the left, right, or centre, you will get criticism, and I mean, even myself, from the Irish community here, and even from the Irish church, I have been criticised, time after time after time, but it didn't bother me, I, said, I kept on campaigning, uh, and I think that, uh, that uh, Jean should do the same thing, uh, campaign, and never mind about uh, all this nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of division in the 9-11 Truth movement itself. I mean, a few years ago, the movement was much bigger. There were many more people in, you know, coming to these meetings. But people divide along increasing numbers of lines over all these theories. And that's where it goes wrong. Because if you stick to the facts, what, what, is, what can you divide on? But people have different theories and people think other oh, people are agents and God knows what else. And paranoia and egos and everything. And so the division... It's so bad that, that then people don't want to join, and and you're not using the resources, you're not using the you know the skills of people. I'm, you know, I mean, it's just left to two or three people to do everything. Uh, yes, but I I I, um, I think I probably w I've been involved in more campaigns than any other single person in this room uh, over <laughs> over long periods of time, <laughs> and. Um, Yes, it is exceedingly difficult, but you get all these uh, problems. And if you take, just looking at Julian Assange's campaign, Julian Assange was selected as a senator for the state of Victoria. And those of us involved with that campaign, I went outside of Australia House uh, for day after day. We, we, we abandoned the vigil that we have outside the Ecuadorian embassy, and we campaigned there, and we had the Liberal Party and the Labour Party and the Greens. Now, in Australia, the, you select, in the Senate, you select the vote uh, for the candidate and then you give your preference. Now they gave the, the, the some of the, the there was one uh, Aboriginal candidate who had joined the National Party, which really is a kind of a fascist party in Australia, because the former leader of it was convicted of firing uh, a gun at a member of the ANC and he was put in prison and that's the type of party. And the, the candidate, uh, uh, that was selected for Western Australia by Julian Assange, he said to vote for the, for the uh, National Party candidate who was a member, of the, a member of the National Party. And then you had a big row within the whole thing, and Julian Assange got less than 1% of the vote as a result of this division, as a result of this fight, and even the Sex Party in the state of Victoria got more votes than he got. So I, 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 I say that division is a very dangerous thing. Because this is what it done to Julian Assange's campaign in the state of Victoria. So what what can we do to? Try well, I think that what you do is what we Irish had to do was we 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 we, we were sometimes reduced to very very small numbers, and what we done was we got the loyal people and we dumped out the people that we thought that we couldn't trust, and sometimes it might be democratic, but we just got a small group and we got the dedicated group and we said to hell with the rest of them, we keep going. And that's what I think that all campaigns, I would advise you, it doesn't matter what campaign it is, what you're campaigning for, get the people who are sincere, who are honest, and who are dedicated, and keep them together, and let the rest of them go to hell. <laughs> we have a, a very warm thank you from uh, Mr. Tim Curran.